Hi everyone, today I'm going to be reviewing this brand new socket from MK. It's the new Logic Plus and if we get into this, what's different about this? We've actually got uh, Wago type connectors at the back. Okay, so uh, quick review on this guys and uh, let's get into it. So, this is the brand new socket that I've just picked up from Screwfix. I'm going to give you a description down below of the where to buy this thing and the cost. It is over five pounds, guys, so it is a little bit on the pricey side, but to be honest, you do pay for what you get. I would be interested if you fitted one of these, what you think in the comments below. Um, personally, I think that this socket has got certain applications that it would be best suited to. And one of the things I'm just going to do very quickly is just run over the pros and cons, what I think. Obviously, if you've got anything to add, please comment in the section below. And if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. It really helps me out. And uh, yeah, I'll uh, get straight into it. So this socket is designed to go into a standard 25mm deep box. Although I would highly recommend the use of a 35mm deep box if you've got more than say one or two wires in there. Um, it's not always possible to swap these things out, but again, it will be dependent on the depth of what it is that you're, uh, you're fixing your socket face back to. And I'm just gonna give you a quick example of what I'm talking about. So, as we see, MK say that this will fit a standard box. Now, as you can see, there's a whole lot flush with the edge. Uh, there ain't a lot of room in there. Now, if, say, for instance, you've got a little bit of a gap between where your plasterboard finishes and the, the socket at the back, then clearly you ain't going to have any problems fixing it to a 25mm box. Um, this is where this would come in. If you're fixing it to a surface box, I would highly recommend that you use a spacer in between. You can buy a spacer adapter uh, to go in between that will match up to this colour of this face plate. Now at the minute, I'm not 100% certain guys whether you'll be able to buy um, any chrome or you know different colours of, of these sockets into the future. Brand new product, just come out as far as I know. So let's get into some of the more beneficial things from an electrolyte installer point of view. Obviously it's colour coded. I'm hearing quite a lot of positivity and negativity online on social media at the moment and that is sort of due to the fact that I think people are a little bit disgruntled that it's taking away the professionalism by having these lift up uh, sort of Wago type connectors at the back. Um, one thing I do like about these is they are a snag eliminator so it's one wire in each of these terminals so if you've see you've got three wires you can put into there. Uh, it'll take a standard 2.5, anything up to 4 mil. That's what it says on the box, although I haven't tried this in anger yet. I'm going to do um, a socket swap in an adjacent room in a few minutes, and I'm going to have a look how easy that is to actually terminate and get onto the wall. The, uh, the other thing I quite like about it is they've actually thought about putting at the top here, a test point. So rather strangely, it's on the opposite sides. Um, you've got... Uh, your live conductors going in here, but then at the top you've got your neutral test point, and over here you've got your neutral conductor um, insertion point, but your live test point. And uh, obviously we don't need an earth one because we've got the whole of this bar. Uh, obviously you can use an adapter at the front, and you can use a plug-in adapter and uh, just stick it into there if you wish. Um, there is also a handy little strip guide which is there, which is recommended that you strip your cables back by 10 millimeters, okay? Now, as a rule of thumb, I normally buy pliers and there is a video which uh, I've done, which is quite a while ago, about a year ago, where I show people how to strip cables. And if I just grab my pliers, just as an indicator. So that's the guide. And if you can see, my pliers are around 10 mil, so I can use that as a guide as well very very handy especially out in the field um, i normally use that as the width for for stripping me my wires off so like i say um be careful about the box that you're going to be using um it is going to make a massive difference to the overall quality if you're not careful you could end up crushing some of the cables 
uh, this little bit here does tend to stick out a little bit. Um, unlike other countries around the world who perhaps use different types of cable, obviously in this country we've got to use sleeving. Uh, some people do cut that a little bit short and I think that that is designed to allow for that so that the conductors aren't showing outside of the termination in, into the socket. Um, I like the other bit about it as well, this is double pole. It's quite a positive and firm connection on the rocker, they're inboard. So inboard rockers mean that they're actually inside. Uh, again, looking at the back of it, it comes with two fixing screws, which are machine quality 3.5 screws. And uh, they are sort of firm in there. They're not likely to fall out when uh, you, know, you give it a bit of a shake prior to installation. So you can be rest assured that that's not gonna be a problem. These switches are double pole, and that means that it isolates both the neutral and the live. So when you turn this switch off, you can rest assured that this is absolutely isolated and there's no problems with that whatsoever. So yeah, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get this thing connected in, uh, get it on the wall, uh, liven it up, and let's have a see how it, uh, how it tests out. So one of the problems we face with traditional sockets such as this, and I've just disconnected these earths so that you can see a little bit, is that we do get um, a problem with the conductors when they go inside the terminations getting slightly crushed on the end so you can see that there um, and it happens for everyone unfortunately if you under tighten they pop out if you over tighten you squash them and they can become brittle uh, again on my cable stripping video there is a demonstration of that that i give you i'll try and put a link in in the comment section below um, but what i'm going to do now is uh, i'm going to wire this socket up and and then I'll disconnect these, I'll clean these ends up, I'll disconnect them and let you have a look at the damage that the new socket causes, which should be minimal and uh, it should improve this sort of situation from happening. Right, so let's just put the, uh, let's just put the earths in for now and then we'll have a look, see what sort of, of damage is caused uh, to the conductor. So as we can see, terminating this thing in a real live situation, very easy. Um, these conductors, if I can just move the, the camera for you. So these conductors are not coming out of there. Um, they're very, very, you know, there is a little bit of play on that lever, but it's only playing the lever. It's not actually releasing any of the cable from, from the socket. Yeah, um, first instance, I'm pretty impressed. As you can see, uh, that guard's just offering a little bit of extra protection so that the conductors or the burr conductors are not gonna be seen. So let's release it from the socket now and uh, have a look, see if there's any damage to the actual conductor itself. We'll take this out. Very, very easy to, to release those two. And let's have a look to see if there's any sort of damage. Let's have a look to see if there's any sort of damage to the end of there. And it doesn't look like there is any, you know, uh, the little bit of scuffing that's on there is from the previous socket installation. So nothing at all uh, to write home about. So yeah, that's uh, that's a pass from, from that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to wire the rest of it in and I'm going to, as you can see there, it's a standard 25mm deep box and we'll have a look, see if we can get that, uh, that socket into that box without any problems. Right, so let's get the new socket wired in uh, because we've got two terminations on each side. So I've opened up the, the relevant pins, let's see how fast this goes in. And I've already taken the liberty of stripping back the conductors to the required length. So that is um, 10 mil using the little handy guide that's on the top. Um, so let's insert this in here. So that's the first one in and the second one in. And as you can see, as per the requirements, there is actually no conductor showing here whatsoever which is how it should be that is firm i'm well impressed with with how firm that does hold in there um, let's put the next ones in so we'll put the live conductors in again always give you your terminations a little tug at the end just to make sure that they're not pulling out you don't have to be too brutal with them and uh, put the last one in 
and then finally last but not least we'll uh, we'll get our earth cables in so again just making sure that enough of this goes in that's the first one in I'll just pull some of that sleeve in back a little bit more then I can see that it's actually a firm connection and that's the second one in and that's it they're terminated guys now as you can see I haven't bothered for the purpose of this with a little fly lead to the back of the box. Um, it's not overly necessary because I've got one permanent fixed lug here. And, uh, you know, for the purpose of the video, we the demonstration, we just don't need it at this moment. So I'm going to screw this back and uh, let's see how easy it is to actually get it back into, into the wall. So I won't take too um, much trouble in sort of trying to move the cables out of the way at the moment to my usual sorts of standards because I want to try and replicate as though somebody who is a little bit on the amateurish side doing this um, just to see how how easy it actually is so I'll just manipulate them a little bit and we'll see how easy it is so there we go that's going back pretty flush it is in a standard 25 mil box and therefore it, it does fit but as you can see perhaps if uh, if I zoom in here a little bit, there is a bit of extra depth where the plaster is. And what you'll find is that uh, most uh, most installations do have this extra little bit of depth to the socket face. So it's all right seeing these on a workbench, um, but it, you know, actually seeing it in the real world like this is a, a different experience altogether. So let's see if we can get this in. So using the screws that are, are provided. We shall tighten this up. So I've done the, on this occasion, the adjustable lug first. The lug is on the socket box. If your lugs are a little bit worn or a little bit old, you can always use a re-threader such as this. I always buy a 3.5 long reach re-threader rather than a short stubby one, just in case the socket box is further back in the wall. Um, you can have both types, I suppose, but this is very useful, especially if uh, your socket's recessed in the wall. And the purpose of this is that it puts a, another clean thread, it'll actually clean your thread up so that when you put your screws in, they go in a lot easier and a lot safer. So we'll just tighten this up satisfactorily. Obviously guys, if you're doing any work yourself, make sure it's safe, the power is isolated. I've already done that uh, prior to this uh, demonstration. I'm not gonna bother sort of uh, lining up the screws too neatly um, because it's just a little demonstration as to it. And that's pretty much on the wall, like I said. These rockers, pretty firm. I'm impressed with them. I'm going to get the trusty Mega out now and do a quick ZS or loop test. And uh, let's see what kind of result we get. So I've got me Mega MFT 1711, which is the entry level model uh, that Mega produce. Very good bit of kit, guys. Uh, highly recommend this as a tester generally. It is the entry model level, uh, but it's perfect for domestic and light commercial duty jobs so i'm going to set the machine up on loop test and we'll just do a basic plug in energize our socket and we're on three low which means it's not going to trip the rcd And that is a lovely reading of 0.21. Now, previously testing this ring main, I know that it is only a short, very small ring main. And uh, that reading is pretty good, especially with trip lock on. So I know that those terminations in that socket are, are very good. If uh, you like the contents of today's video, please give it a thumbs up, uh, subscribe to the channel, don't forget to hit the notification bell, and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Thanks very much.